Hi folks, hope you are doing great. In this video, I am going to talk about OO2. To set the expectations right, this is not a video about uh, the basics of OO2. I assume you have a good understanding about OO2. It's uh, core roles like the resource server, resource owner, authorization server and the client. And also, I assume you have a good understanding about different grant types in O2 and uh, when and where to use those grant types. Here, I'm going to show you how to use curl uh, to demonstrate the four core grant types defined in the O2 RFC 6749. I'm using WSO2 identity server as the authorization server. If you hear about WSO2 identity server for the first time, it's an identity and access management server released under the most business friendly open source license Apache 2. You can go to wso2.com and products, identity and access management and then download the latest version of the WSO2 identity server. At the time of this recording, it is IS530. In this demo, I am using that particular version. I, I have it downloaded already. To run identity server, you need to have JDK 1.8 plus and then again you need to set up Java home environmental variable properly in your local environment. Now you need to go under Java uh, I didn't save a home directory which is wc 2 is 530 and then bin directory start the server with wso 2 server.sh this will start on uh, https port 9443 by default if you haven't done any uh, configuration changes but then again if you want to change the ports you can do it by editing the value of the parameter offset in repository conf carbon xml this will take around 40 to uh, 50 seconds to start in my local machine Okay, got started. Now I can log into Adding Server through the URL HTTPS localhost 9443. Adding Server uh, comes with an embedded LDAP server. It has a user called admin with the password admin. In a production deployment, you can deploy Adding Server over, over an Active Directory. A database or or any LDAP server. So I'm using the default credentials admin admin to log into the management console. Now I'm logged in. Uh, first thing I need to do is I need to register my O to a client with admin server and then get the credentials. To do that, I need to add that as a service provider. Click on add. You can give any name here. I'll give O app. It can be any name register then the most important configuration element here is inbound authentication configuration all the requests sent by OAuth app to identity server they are inbound requests from identity server's point of view since this is an OAuth app it's sending OAuth requests so I need to configure OAuth open ID connect click on configure now you need to give a callback URL. For this particular demo, you can give any uh, callback URL because uh, my objective is uh, to, to show how things work at the uh, row level. Um, I don't have any application. I just give a URL here which is non-existing. So that means whenever uh, uh, authorization server sends a response to this particular URL, It'll, it'll remain on the browser. Let's say localhost. If 
Python callback. Okay, so these are the grant types I didn't server supports out of the box. In this particular demo, I am going to show you how code, implicit, password, and grant credential grant type work, and also uh, refresh grant type. Okay, in addition to this. Uh, seven grant types listed here identity server also supports jwt uh, grant type okay let's click on add done uh, that's all you need to do you need to uh, copy the value of the client key and the client secret before that i have a set of curl scripts in my git repo you will download them you can go to my github location I'll uh, put this link under the description of this video so you don't need to uh, uh, hand type this so you can see it's github.com facile login aratua you can download this complete repo <coughs> either you can uh, do a git clone or else download this as a zip file and the curl scripts are under this directory curl scripts okay now let me show you i already have those curl scripts with me okay so this is the curl script directory here uh, i use env.sh file to store all these client id client secret and the basically uh, the variables let me open it up and show you This has, this, this has some additional uh, variables too, you don't need to worry about it. To make sure the token endpoint points to the identity server's token endpoint, should be local loss 94430 token. Then authorization endpoint points to this one, then you don't need to worry about introspection, we are not going to show it in this demo. Prevoke, you don't need to worry. PDP server URL, you don't need to worry. And two scheme main points, you need not to worry. Right. So maybe in a different video, we'll talk about those things. Then you need to copy and paste your client ID and client secret here. Let me copy it. Client ID. And then client secret. So make sure you uh, copy it correctly, right? Done. Then I'm using this particular username and password for the resource owner password grant type. So I just put the username of the admin user and his password, okay? The scope value, you can put any value here by default i have set it to read right then the redirect uri make sure this is the same redirect uri you set while creating the application so if i go here you can see i have set it to http local lost 5000 callback so this has to be the same and so because we need to send this in the request itself and i didn't say validate whether what is in the request is matching with the registered redirect URI. So that's all. Okay. Now you can save it. So what I'm going to do is I have a set of curl scripts referring to certain uh, environment variables which are defined in this env stage. So I need to source this file first. So then all these uh, values that are defined in this uh, sh file will get loaded into this particular environment so i don't need to retype them now let's go into the OAuth directory okay first i'll show you how the password grant type works that's the easiest one right so resource owner password grant type basically you ask the end users the resource owners username and password then you do a post to the identity service token endpoint you can look at that script 
here you can see you get the uh, username and password of this particular user resource owner and then you post it to the token endpoint this is a token endpoint right of the identity server you can see the value of grant type is set to password and I am picking the username and password from the environment okay then the scope once again I pick from the environment then here you need to authenticate the client the application itself so I am using client again client secret then again keep in mind in in O2O it doesn't mandate to authenticate the client with client ID and client secret you can use any form it can be uh, certificate based or it can be any other means okay that's it now if I just run this one I will get the the response here you can see I have the access token then the refresh token then the scope of the access token and the token type is bearer and this expires in uh, 3600 seconds right the expiration of the the access token okay so this is how the uh, resource owner password grant type works next let's see how the client credentials grant type works so let me show you that script first here also you can see I am picking the token endpoint from the environment client ID and client secret from the environment and the grant type is set to client credentials right now if I just run this one I get the access token here you can see there is no refresh token for the grant credentials grant type okay now let's see how authorization code grant type works I cannot do it completely with uh, curl uh, okay now this will basically uh, sorry this will basically uh, print you the uh, print you the request that you need to copy and paste on the browser if you look at the a search file you can see I am sending this request to the authorization endpoint of the identity server and set the client ID scope and the read rec URI and the response type is set to code okay so I need to copy this thing here so this will work through a browser copy this thing start a private browser it takes me to the Ident server's login page I can log in with a user in the Ident server and then I need to give my consent you can see this shows read uh, this is corresponding to the scope value we pass in the authorization request approve then Ident server will redirect me to the application the redirect URI so this is a redirect URI I don't have any application running on this uh, port I can just copy this one right this is the authorization code passed by the identity server this is exactly what your application will do copy this code and now to uh, okay now uh, I need to exchange this uh, authorization code to an access token so first thing uh, uh, I need to do is I need to export this code to the environment okay. and if you look at this script uh, code token you can see it's picking the client ID and client secret from the environment variable in environment and then client ID from the environment, read rec URI from the environment, and also the code. This is what we uh, got before, which we copied from the browser and uh, exported to the uh, environment. It's picked from uh, the environment. So we need to make sure the code is exported before we run this uh, script. Okay. So here, here we are sending this request to the 
token endpoint of the identity server. Now, if you just run this one, it should return me back the access token, refresh token, scope, token type, and uh, the expiration. Now, if you want to refresh an access token, then you need to use a refresh token. Refresh token uh, is once again the refresh is again once again a uh, grant type in O2O. If you open the open the refresh shell script, you can see how it works. I need to have the client ID and client secret. Then the grant type is set to refresh token, and I need to pass the refresh token right to the token endpoint of the identity server. So to execute this script, I need to export the refresh token refresh token to the environment refresh and then execute the so now you can see I got a new access token and also a new refresh token and it's a configuration uh, parameter in that in server you can you can uh, tell that in the server whether it's in a new refresh token each time you refresh the access token or use the old one okay and also the expiration time of access token and refresh token all are configurable through the repository conf identity identity xml configuration file now last thing let's see how the implicit grant type works okay. once again you need to have a browser here so let me uh, let me create the URL where I need to copy and paste on the browser. If you look at that particular shell script, you can see once again I'm picking the client ID from the authorization endpoint, then the redirect URI and the response type is set to token. In authorization code grant type, response type was set to code. Okay, that's the main difference. And I'm sending this request to the authorization endpoint. In implicit grant type, you don't need to have a client secret. And this, this uh, request itself, when you copy and paste to the browser, it will return you the access token as a URI fragment. Just copy this one. Okay, start a private browser. Paste this one. Once again, I'm on the identity server login page. I can log in with uh, Prabhat and its credentials. So then it shows me the scope, the permission of this particular permission requested for, for this particular access token. Let's approve it. Now you can see I got redirected to my uh, uh, redirect UR, URI and the access token is passed as URI fragment, right? You can see the access token is there. Token type is set to bearer, expires in this number of seconds. Then again, there is no refresh token for the implicit grant type. Okay, so now you you so there are no re, no refresh tokens uh, either for the implicit grant type or for the client credentials grant type. That concludes uh, our demo today. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below. Thank you very much.